Welcome to your Yes Build Life. I'm your host, Brenda Winkle, educator, healer, speaker, guide, and fierce advocate for your yes. I help sensitive and successful men and women find, reclaim, and live from their full embodied yes. Through empowering you to understand your energetic hygiene, establish healthy boundaries, and heal your nervous system, you'll be able to create your yes-filled life and move through your days with more freedom, more ease, and more joy. You'll hear inspiring stories of people who found their full-bodied yes, thought leaders who pursued their own dreams and are living life on their terms, and learn new ways to find the courage, joy, ease, and freedom to more fully step into your yes-filled life. Say no to the good so you can say yes to the great. Join me on this journey to discover your yes-filled life. Whether you're looking to break free from the golden handcuffs, start a new business, find your dream job, or simply live with more intention and mindfulness, I've got you covered. Let's explore the possibilities together and make your dreams a reality. Ready? Let's do this. Let's get you to your Yes, filled life. Hello, and welcome back to your Yes, filled life. I'm your host, Brenda Winkle. I am the energy healer for high performers, helping you elevate, amplify, and expand so that you can get your mission into the hearts and minds of more people. One of the things that I've noticed among my clients recently is that. If we are not tuning into our bodies, sometimes we're missing really important information. Here's what I mean by that. Oftentimes in our culture, we are taught, inculcated, even encouraged to view any kind of symptom that we experience in our body as an inconvenience. And we find ways to make the symptom go away. For example, you have a headache, pop an ibuprofen. You have some heartburn, take an antacid. If we do this, we are missing really important information that our bodies are trying to give us. And as a high performer, this is really essential for you to understand because as a high performer, I know that you are highly intelligent. You are already very, very good at what you do. You have had to work extraordinarily hard to get where you are and you're used to pushing. You're used to hustling. I know because I've been there and I'm watching my clients do the same thing. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about how to tune into the body, how to learn to view anything that's happening within our body as information instead of an inconvenience and how to tap into that information and why it really matters that we do so. So I am currently completing a trauma-informed somatic coaching certification. I will finish probably by the beginning of February, 2023. I've been working on it for around six months. I am working with clients in a practicum right now where I'm getting 60 hours of client facing time working on this healing modality. And I am just so honored to be doing this work with the people who have been generous enough to let me basically practice on them. And here's what I'm learning. I'm learning that For many of us, it's difficult to get into our bodies and that when we do, there is so much rich information there that we already have everything we need within us. The other thing that I'm learning from working with many, many, many of my high-performing clients is that because you're highly intelligent and because you had to work so hard to get where you are, it is very common for you to rely on your intellect. Now, Intellect is important, but if you are relying on your intellect at the expense of your intuition, you're missing out on a lot of things. Why? Well, think about all of the major disruptors, creators, visionaries. 
every single one of them leaned into their intuition. They did things that were unconventional. They did things that were against the norm. They did things outside of the box. Think of people don't like Bill Gates, Samantha Skelly, Kendra Scott, Reagan Hillier. All of those people followed their intuition. They did not rely on what someone else told them. They did not rely on a framework that had been built for them. They created their own. And the way that they did that was through their intuition. And the access point to your intuition is often through the body. So if we are numbing the body, either through ibuprofen, antacids, or maybe too much food, too much alcohol, too much Netflix, we're missing out on really, really critical information that our bodies are trying to share with us. So I'm not telling you this from a place of judgment. I'm telling you from a, this from a place of deep understanding. And I'd love to tell you a story. In 2022, between July and October, of 2022, I experienced six major life changes. My dog Hutch died in July, which was a really difficult thing to experience. In August of 2022, I left a 26 year teaching career to go out on my own full time, doing the work that I now do supporting high performers like you. In October of 2022, my daughter who was 21 or almost 21 at the time, moved out and took our other living dog, Jane, with her. I sold a house and moved into an apartment. So there were six major stressors, major life events that happened between July and October. A dog died. My kid moved out. I quit a teaching career. I went out on my own as an entrepreneur. I sold a house and I moved all within that period of time. And also in October, I began the breathwork facilitator program at Pause Breathwork and became a trauma-informed breathwork facilitator through that program that I started in October of 2022, right at the, the, <laughs> the, the critical point of all of this change in my life. So I was telling myself that because I was tapped into the breath work and I was doing breath work and really practicing that I was a little bit immune to the other stressors. I was telling myself that if I just continued to lean into the breath work the way that I had done, that the rest of it would go away. I didn't really need to address it. It would kind of happen on its own. And, you know, to a certain extent, that is true. It really is true that breath work is that transformational. But the problem was I was ignoring things in my body, deep knowings in my body. And I was kind of still in that forcing energy that I'd been. If you've listened to the podcast for a while, you know that um, in the fall of 2019, I had a major health crisis that I almost, I almost died from because I was ignoring my body. So when we get to the fall of 2022, I've done all of this deep somatic work. I'm working as a coach, as a healer. I really kind of thought, okay, I've got this figured out. I'm listening to my body and things were going well up until about November. And in that November, I realized that I wasn't feeling as well. And it was kind of nondescript. I couldn't really put my finger on what it was. I just knew that something wasn't quite right. I was in a routine. I was seeing clients um, in, in the days I was tapped into the breathwork facilitator program. I was tapped into community through that program. I was a member of a mastermind and tapped into that community. And so I kept telling myself I'm doing all the right things. And yet there was this low level depression that had started to set in. And I was pushing it away, telling myself, this isn't really here. This isn't really here. This is not real. I can just continue to do the things I'm doing and it's going to go away. It's all going to be fine without actually acknowledging everything that I was experiencing. 
So in November of 2022, I was in the groove of taking care of Jane, the Chawini, the dog that my daughter and I had shared until she moved out. And what that meant was that I was living in between Maya's work and her apartment. And so each day, Maya would come and drop off Jane, the Chawini, at my apartment when she went to work. She was working, you know, between three and five days a week. So on the days that Maya worked, I would see Maya, I would spend the day with Jane, And, you know, things were pretty good. It was easy to pretend that everything was great. Well, sometime in November, Maya ended up with three days off in a row. And it happened at a time that was concurrent with a lot of the other kinds of things that I was tapped into not being active. So for whatever reason, and I literally can't remember, for whatever reason, I wasn't tapped into the mastermind I was a part of. I wasn't tapped into the breathwork program. I wasn't tapped into even my own community. And I noticed that the only people that I was having contact with were people online and in Voxer, which let's not take anything away from that. That is absolutely beautiful and wonderful. But when I say those were the only people I'm, I was seeing, I mean, they were the only people I was seeing. I was new to this apartment neighborhood and I was trying really hard to integrate into that neighborhood. And so I would walk multiple times a day, hoping to meet some of the, the residents in my apartment complex, maybe to make new friends and, you know, establish a neighbor relationship. And at the end of a third day sequence, there were three days in a row that I was doing this, not having the, the meetings, Maya wasn't coming over because she wasn't working. And I was just walking around the apartment complex. I realized it had been three days since I had had interaction with a human three days since I'd even seen another human. Now, if you're an introvert, that might sound like heaven to you. I am an extrovert. And that means that I am energized by being around people and that I actually feel better when I'm around people. So for me to not have seen another person for three days was a lot. So I had this cognitive awareness that "Mm, something's a little off here. And later that night, I sat down on the sofa, I turned on a lamp, and I began to read. I heard the flutter of wings. And I thought to myself, where is that coming from? And it was coming from the lamp next to me. Out from the top of the lampshade emerged a large stink bug crawling around the rim of the lamp. Now I had the cognitive awareness to know that this was a situation that I normally would recoil from. I am not scared of bugs, but I don't really want to live next door to a bug, but that's not how I felt that day. That day I felt such profound relief that there was another living being that wasn't my plant. And I also had the cognitive awareness that that thought was not normal. And so I recognized in that moment that I needed to make a change, that I needed to really address the feelings, allow myself to feel them, allow myself to let the feelings inform what would happen next. And the minute I did that and really admitted I was lonely, I was grieving my grown daughter moving out. I was grieving the loss of my dog Hutch. I was grieving a 26 year career. I was stressed and anxious about becoming a new entrepreneur and supporting myself. And I hadn't really given any of those things credit. So when I began to give myself permission to actually feel those things, everything started to shift. Ideas popped into my mind. Hmm, what would it be like if I went walking on a trail instead of around my apartment? Hmm, what would it be like if I changed my routine? And instead of planning, shopping for, and preparing my meals for the week on Sunday, I broke that up into two or three times per week so I could get out of the house and make sure that I was interfacing with humans somehow, some way, even if just at the grocery store. 
And slowly, little by little, by little by little, I began to change and feel better. That's also how I knew in my body that it was time to leave the apartment. So anytime we're experiencing stress or friction in the body, we don't want to ignore it. We don't want to pop a pill for it because if we do, we're missing the lesson. So I've talked about context and content before on the podcast. The context is the thing that's happening all around you. The content is the emotional learning that happens as you move through the life experience. If we're always popping a pill to take away the discomfort that we're feeling, we are missing the opportunity to work through the content. And what that means is no matter what we do or where we go, we're going to continue to have that lesson coming back to us. So how does this apply to you? It's easy and common for us to resist actually feeling into the body because sometimes there's information there that we're not quite ready to hear. And what I mean by that is I was not necessarily ready to hear it from my body. It was time for me to move. But by listening to my body, I got myself out of a situation that was not ideal. Not only was I not a fit energetically for the apartment complex, but I was having a nervous system response every time my neighbors came and went because I was on a second floor apartment with the garages below my apartment. And so every time they came and went and opened the garage door, my whole apartment would rumble. And it really took a toll on my nervous system. So when I realized that I needed to make a change to protect my own energy, I made that decision and I gave notice at the apartment without knowing where the next place was going to be. And that's how I found the place that I'm in now, which I love. I absolutely love it. I just followed the body wisdom. I did have to be willing to make some changes and you will be too. Now, they may not be as big as moving. But it might mean that when you tap into the body wisdom, you have to make some changes in your relationships, maybe in the way that you're working, maybe even the kind of work that you're doing. But let's talk about how to track energy. How do you know when something's wrong? How do you know when you need to make a change? Well, your body is going to be telling you. So let's talk about tracking energy in terms of relationships. I want you to think of the person who you love to spend time with the most. Get that person in your mind. Now, imagine how you feel after spending time with that person. My hope for you would be you feel lit up, expansive, joyful, enthusiastic, energized. Now, if you are spending time with people who don't make you feel that way, that is an actual energetic tax. It's costing you energy to spend time with those people. So if you have someone that you're spending time with and you notice, like for me, I feel it in my eyes first. I notice that like the rims around my eyes, around my eyelids start to get kind of hot like they do right before I'm really sleepy. And then I'll notice fatigue setting in. I might even have the urge to yawn. I'll notice I feel very tired or I might be fidgety. I'm typically not fidgety. I'm very relaxed most of the time. But if I start to fidget, that is a cue to me that something's going on. I'm uncomfortable with something. There's something in my nervous system that's being triggered right now. So if I notice either an, a, um, an impulse to wiggle my foot, for example, I'll tap into that and realize, hmm, something here isn't aligned for me. Or if I'm sitting across from somebody at lunch and I'm just exhausted, I know that it's not an energetic match for me, that it's costing me more energy. Now, let's talk about one of the things that comes up for people. Some people say, well, but that person is my friend. I want to be supportive to them. And, you know, they don't have somebody else. And if I don't spend time with them, who will? Well, I'm going to tell you something. That's not necessarily your problem. That is a problem that they get to solve. Your only job is to protect, preserve, 
and expand your own energy. And the moment you prioritize your energy and your peace over everything else, things fall into place in a really, really beautiful way. So as we track energy, I would love for you, if you have the capacity and you're not driving, I would love for you to grab a piece of paper and I would love for you to draw a line down the middle of the paper. And at the top of the paper, I would, I'd like you to write energizing on the left side column. And I'd like you to write depleting on the right side column. So you've got your paper divided into two columns, energizing on one side, depleting on the other. And then I would love for you to brainstorm all of the things that energize you, that light you up, and then also list out the things that deplete you. Taking a little sip of water here. <clears throat> As you make your list, you can think about relationships, situations, chores, all different kinds of topics in these two columns of energizing and depleting. Now, the things that are on your depleting column, we're going to talk about those in just a minute. We'll come back to that. The things that are on the energizing column, whether it's having fun or spending time with friends or a specific person that energizes you, or maybe it's an activity like walking or running or going to yoga Whatever you find on the energizing column, I would love for you to find a way to do more of those kinds of things. When we start with the energy richness and we use that energy richness to inform the rest of our decisions, everything else falls into place. It's almost like magic, except it's not magic, it's energy. So if we have an energy richness somewhere, we can spread that to the places that don't have as much energy. So I'll give you an example. I love Lizzo's song about damn time. I've talked about her a lot in the podcast. I am so excited for the day that I actually get to meet her in person. I've attended one of her concerts, but her song about damn time just is so energizing for me. I can dance it out and listen to that song and sing along with it before I do something. And I'm telling you what, it makes such a difference in my content if I'm feeling good. So I use the things that are energy rich to fuel me to create more content that is aligned for you. And I guarantee you, you can feel it if I have not done that because I probably repel you. And the same is true for you. The more you energize yourself before you're creating content, or whether that's content for your work, or if you're a content creator or you're an entrepreneur, the more you energize and elevate and amplify your energy before you even do the thing, it absolutely has an impact. So Samantha Skelly, who's one of my mentors, she always says, don't touch the baby before you wash your hands. So when we're talking about energy, this is what we're talking about. You don't go do the thing until you've already cleaned up your energy, amplified it, expanded it. So if you're in any kind of a collapse where you're not feeling energized, whether it's fatigue or you've got something on your mind or you're feeling low, that is not the time to create. That is the time to energize and amplify and elevate your energy. And then once you've got your energy on lock, then from that point, then you can create. So when we say you're going to amplify your energy, you're going to go find those things on the side of your paper that are energy rich. You're going to do those things right before you do things that maybe you either really want to have a super squeaky clean, high vibe energy, or maybe they don't have, maybe the thing you're going to do isn't that energetically rich. You could use it in any number of way. What we often do, which doesn't work quite as well is we try to muscle through the things that are depleting, which actually only depletes us more. So as you go through your list of things that deplete you, we're going to form three categories of things that deplete you. There, on these three categories, we're going to have things that you could amplify, things you could like actually change how you feel about them. We're going to have, this. So that's number one, Number two is things that you can shift your perspective on. 
to amplify. And then number three on the depleting list, things you actually need to turn your attention away from. Okay. So on the energizing list, just keep brainstorming what, what brings you energy, what brings you joy, expansion, fun. I'm telling you what energy responds to joy and fun. It is so attractive to energy. And when I say energy, I mean, everybody else was going to feel your energy when you're in that state of expansion and fun. And if you are not in a state of expansion and fun, again, I'm going to come back to it, get there before you do anything. So now let's go over to our depleting column. The first thing that we're going to talk about is how can you amplify things on that column that you really need to do that aren't super fun? And I'll give you an example. So Mopping and sweeping floors is not my favorite thing to do. So I know this about myself. I know that I tend to try to avoid it. So what I do is I find something really, really fun to listen to or watch while I'm doing that. So I might put on an old movie that I like, and then I'll mop or sweep the floor, or maybe I'll put on a podcast that I love and I just listen to the podcast. And very often I will utilize what I call my high vibes playlist. And I just put it on shuffle and let the universe pick a song for me. And then I just go to town and I'm telling you what, I'm having so much fun that by the time two or three songs have finished, I'm done with the sweeping and mopping. And if I wouldn't have amplified my energy in that way, in those 15 minutes, I probably would have completely compressed my energy. And I might've been thinking some negative thoughts, which, have, which would have impacted other things, but by amplifying and using something that I find energy rich and combining it with something that isn't as energy rich, I'm actually amplifying the energy and I make it fun. And so I tend to save some of those favorite kinds of things for things that I really don't want to do, like sweeping and mopping. And then it makes it fun. I even find myself looking forward to it. So that's number one, finding ways that you can combine the things that elevate, amplify, and expand your energy with the things that deplete it. So it's tax season right now, or, you know, getting there because we're all in the new year. What can you do to make working your taxes a little bit more fun? Maybe music isn't the thing, depending on how your brain works. Maybe that would be distracting. But can you make yourself a beautiful cup of tea and drink your tea alongside it? Can you reward yourself after working on the taxes for a set number of minutes per day? Maybe that's when you get to watch Netflix. Find a way to make it something you can look forward to, which leads us to number two, changing the perspective. So changing your perspective is really, really important if you are doing something that depletes your energy that you don't really have an option not to do. So let's say you're stuck in your nine to five and you don't enjoy it. Let's say you are really looking for a change, whether that's getting your own job or uh, your own um your own company, starting your own business, or maybe finding a different job. But in the meantime, you're in this nine to five. If every day you are dreading going to work and then you think negative things all day long, and then you come home and then you're recovering and you're so exhausted from the time that you spent at work. Oh my gosh, that is so depleting. And it's so depleting that it will actually impact your ability to create a change you will not find a new opportunity. You will not be able to start your business because you literally won't have the energy because it's too depleted. So in that case, we've got to find a perspective change. So how can you change the perspective of something that you really need to do? It's not feeling like an option for you to do something different right now and find a way to enjoy it. Well, let's talk about, let's, for example, if we're using the nine to five example, If you're in your nine to five and you're waiting to start your business or something like that, this becomes your path to your freedom. So every day you go to work, you say to yourself, my nine to five is financing my dreams. It's giving me the freedom to work my five to nine or my five to to 12, whatever it is, where you can actually create the life of your dreams in the times that you're not working. So 
every time something happens to you at, at that job that doesn't feel good, you can just say, oh my gosh, it's not that big a deal. I'm going to use this to transmute the energy into something more positive. I am going to use this content for my evolution because I know that this job, this job that I'm not choosing right now is the key to my freedom. Or let's say you're an entrepreneur. Maybe you, one of the things that I find a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with is number one, creating their signature offer and number two, showing up consistently. So in both of those cases, there is a fear there. So how can you shift your perspective on that fear? How about this? Who are the people that you can serve when your offer, your voice, your message is out into the world? How will your offer, your message impact the planet? Knowing that people need your message, knowing that you have something really, really important and valuable to share, how can you put your focus on the people that will be receiving your message and take the focus off of you? That perspective change alone will supercharge your ability to be able to create. If you're worried about you, it's a really easy way to get stuck. When we're thinking about ourselves and we're like, oh, what will people think? Or what message do they really want to hear? But when you tap into your ideal client, into the person that you really want to work with, into your patient or the person who you're serving, and you think about from their perspective, how can I serve? it changes your perspective. And let's be clear, how can I serve is not saying that you should be in servant servitude and do your work for free. That is a whole other podcast episode, but I just want to say service does not need to be free. There is a really important component of this, which is the energy exchange. And you get to have an energy exchange for sharing your gifts into the world. We'll talk more about that another time. So the third thing that we're going to talk about on the the column that said depleting is the things that you need to dump. So let me, let me tell you a story. In the past two days, I have had the opportunity to be face to face with multiple people. And I want to tell you the story just to kind of illustrate tracking the energy. Okay. We're not making anybody good or bad. We're not making any situation good or bad. We're tracking energy. In situation number one, I went to meet a person. I sat across the table from the person for a couple of hours. And by the time I got done sitting across from the person, I was absolutely exhausted. It took me about an hour to get my energy right, to get back to my day after I spent time with them. I was really depleted. I didn't feel like it was what I had signed up for. Scenario number two, I sat across the table from someone and felt completely energized, amplified, elevated. It was reciprocal. That person felt the same. When they left, I still was amplified. I still was energized, even though hours had passed. And this person sat at my table for hours. I don't want to tell you how many hours, like six, eight hours. I mean, it was a long time and I still felt energized. So as you're tracking how you're spending your time in the social aspect of your life or the places where you do have choice, if you're doing something that is depleting, stop doing it. Your energy is more important And the truth is you're not doing someone who's depleting your energy, any favors by sitting there, letting them siphon their, your energy off of you. You're not doing them any favors because the truth is we are all responsible for our own energy. And if you're allowing someone to siphon energy off of you, you're not giving them the dignity of their own experience to learn how to resource themselves. It's not your job to resource them. It's their job to resource themselves. Now, can you be of service 
to someone? Of course. The friend who sat at my table for hours, we talked about some real stuff. Both of us shed tears and yet we were energized. So this is not some kind of Pollyanna thing where we're only talking about the positive things. No, we're talking about all the things, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And still the energetic exchange is so rich, so potent, so powerful that we're feeling amplified and elevated. That's the difference. So on your list of the the depleting side, if you are spending time with someone and you have the choice to spend time with them, like let's say it's social or something, and they deplete you, you need to find a way to get them off your calendar until they can be responsible for their own energy. Now, I probably could have said that another <laughs> another softer way, but um, I really, I, it's so important. It's so important. And you know what? Many times when you tell yourself, the people in your life, the universe, the energy around you, what you are a yes for, the universe responds. So if you notice that everyone that talks to you is coming to you to um, complain or quote, pick your brain about something and they're not, it's not reciprocal, just know that there's some subtle way that you're saying yes to that. And when we're talking about our yes filled lives, we're not talking just about the auto yes. It's not just say yes to as much as you possibly can. It's use discernment to find your yes. You know, in order to find your yes filled life, you're going to have to say no to a lot of stuff, including energy depleters. <laughs> okay. So we've talked about energy richness. We've talked about energy depletion. Let's come back to energy rich. If you struggle with energy richness and you're feeling really anxious, depressed, or sad, I'm going to invite you to do some breath work. Every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific, from now until I change my calendar, I'm going live on Instagram to offer breath work. I also have a monthly new moon ceremony that I offer every single month on the new moon. And you can just go to brendawinkle.com forward slash breath work to learn about the date and the time of those new moon ceremonies. So you've got a free option on Instagram. You've also got the paid new moon ceremony. Those are $119 each. I am accepting a few new clients for my heel to the yes, which is a one-on-one -on -one six month healing program for world changers with a huge mission on their heart. And then of course, we're enrolling in Yes Academy, which is my mastermind healing program and leadership certification program for world changers with a huge mission on their heart. Yes Academy is a 12 month container and it is so impactful. The people that are part of this program are getting their message, their mission, and they're reconnecting with their soul mission to get their message out into the world. So you can just go check out any of the links in the show notes for these things that I'm talking about, but I want to invite you into something really special. So at the beginning of this episode, I was talking to you about how easy it is for us as high performers to use our intellect over our intuition. Your intuition is pinging you you have an inner knowing around the things that are not a fit for you. Just the same way that I had an inner knowing that the apartment wasn't a fit for me, the same way I knew before I met this person and sat across from the table that I felt depleted, I knew that that would happen. I had an intuitive hit. If we can allow our intuition to really drive the show, oh my gosh, everything, everything goes more smoothly. So, I'm going to, I'm creating a special masterclass called unlock intuition, discern intellect from intuition. It's on January 30th at 9am Pacific. You can register by going to brendawinkle.com forward slash intuition. So as we come to a close for this episode, I invite you to really lean into what messages is your body giving you? And, you know, as we talk about pain, let's say if you have pain, heartburn or headaches or other pain, 
I'm going to teach you something that you, you can try before you push away the pain with an aspirin or um, an antacid or something like that. I invite you to talk to the pain. First of all, ask pain, are you mine? You'll be surprised how often the pain that you are carrying in your body is not yours. And we'll talk more about what to do with that a different time. But that would be question number one, pain, are you mine? Question number two is pain, what would you like me to know or do? And you will get an answer. It will probably be something that you kind of know and yet also kind of don't know. <laughs> so like, for example, if, if you ask your, your headache, for example, you might say headache, what do you want me to know? You might get an answer that says something like I'm tired. And then invitation to go do the thing that the pain has told you that it wants you to know. So if it says I need rest, go rest. If it says I need more water, drink more water. If it says I don't want to go to that thing, sometimes actually that happens. Your body knows that something isn't a fit for you. Something isn't energetically aligned and you'll get these weird pains out of nowhere as a way to avoid going to the thing. So we can talk more about how you can you can learn to say no to the things that aren't aligned to you. If you're interested, just email me and say, Hey, yeah, I want to hear more about this. Can you talk about it on the podcast? Because I'm telling you what, your body has everything you need right now. If you'll only allow yourself to feel it. Okay. I hope I see you in the free masterclass on January 30th. It'd be so fun to see you in the new moon breathwork on January 11th where we are activating the energy of one, one, one. And I hope to see you on Instagram at 2 p.m. every Tuesday for some breath work. And I'm really interested in serving you in the way that is really supportive for you. So I would love to know what questions do you have? Where do you need support? And invitation to either DM me on Instagram or email me brenda at brendawinkle.com. And I will find a way to create some content around the questions that you have. Thank you so much for listening to your Yes Filled Life. It just means the world to me that we're doing this journey together. And if you haven't left the podcast or rating your review, please go do so at this time. And if you love this episode, please share it with a friend. Bye for now. Until next time.